So today I'm going to be talking about console, the console object, and the fact that there's more than just log. Now I'm not going to cover extensively everything that console can do, but I'm going to show you a few cool tricks that you can use. Now if you're just starting out with web development, just starting out with JavaScript, you know how useful console log can be to write out the value of variables and so on. But sometimes you don't quite see all the values that you want, or sometimes you can't get to an interactive object that you can drill down into. So I want to talk about how that works and um, give you a few tips. All right, so I started off by creating a simple little script here. I've got a few variables, a string, a number, a boolean. Uh, I've got my shortcut that I often create to console.log just to save me typing the word console over and over and over again. I have an object here called data. It's got a couple of properties inside of it, one prop one, prop two. One's a string, one's an array of objects, just so I can have data that I want to write out. And then I've got a namespace that I created here, which is just a series of functions, f1 through f4. I'm using the console log in three of them, and I'm going to use console trace in one of them as well. So we're going to get to that in just a minute. So let's start off with the fundamentals of what we're doing with console.log. So if I'm going to be writing out Okay, so my first one here, these are just for references so I can see them when they come up in the console right here. So I've got these three variables, string, number, boolean. If I do it this way, if I write it with the commas in between, then the original data types get maintained. It is four separate things that are being written. So I've got this string and then this string, both of them are white. Then a number and a boolean both show up with a different color. This is how we know that they are the different data types inside of here. If, however, which sometimes you'll do, I'm going to use the plus sign to concatenate the string together. If I do this and I do put a space and then we'll take that number. Now, when I write those out, you'll notice how everything's showing up white. So if you're trying to concatenate together instead of using the commas, what you're doing is you're actually converting everything to a string. Anytime JavaScript sees a string and something else, whether it's a number or a Boolean, if there's at least one string inside of whatever you're concatenating, it does concatenation, not addition. So it's turned everything here into strings to be able to write them out. Okay, fair enough. With the object, if I come in here, let's say for my third one, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. If I do the plus sign, it turns it into a string. So this object now becomes just this string object object, because that's what happens when you turn and cast an object into a string. That's what you get. If I use the comma between them, like this. Okay, now I'm back to the original object. So I haven't um, hampered my ability to get in there and actually see what's inside. I can drill down inside of this and look at all the various properties. Okay, now that's great. I can drill down through here to get to everything. But there's one other little trick that you can use. If you wrap your object inside of a set of parentheses like this, what's going to happen is you get to see what this is. So data, that's the name of my variable. That's automatically put inside there. And then I also get everything that's inside of here. So if I'm writing out a whole bunch of objects, this is what I'll tend to do. Instead of putting labels on like this, I'll just do this because it's automatically going to give me the name of whatever the variable is that's holding my object or my array. Okay, so that's one with the curly braces. Another one is all this data inside of here. Yeah, I can drill down or this one I can drill down, but it's a little bit messy to go through and figure out. Now, this is a pretty small object with very few properties, but another way that we can put the output this is by using, sorry, instead of log, console.table. This will allow us to convert whatever we have into a table. Now, my object 
had two properties inside of it. Those become the keys over here on the left. So prop one was hello, prop two was an array with all of these objects. Then again, I can still drill down to get to these things, but that's still not that great. So I'm gonna comment that one out. Actually here, I will comment all of these out just to save some space. Console.table and instead of just data, I want to get that array that was inside of here. Inside of here, data.prop2. This is what I want to see. So we can do data.prop2, write that out, and there we go. Much easier to read through and figure out where things are, what the names of the keys are inside the object. It's just a really nicely formatted way, and I don't have to do anything other than use the method table. So console.table is going to get me that. Okay, now, other ones. Console.trace. All right, so let's close this up and look at the functions that I had here. F1 through F4. If I call F1, it's going to go to F2, F2 will go to F3, F3 will go to F4. There's just a chain of them. Each one is going to log out, except for the very last one right here. It's going to use console trace instead of console.log. So if I call that last one funks.f4, if I run that, there we go. And this says inside of f4, there's the function f4. So inside of 4, that was my log statement. Console.trace does do a log, but what it also gives me. Beyond that, see, I've got this little arrow that I can open up. Inside of there, it tells me this was the stack of things that were called. So there was an anonymous call to the function, and then this is my global scope calling this F4 function. Okay, not much happened. But if I call F1 instead of F4, now we're going to be going through all of them. I will get, and I'm just going to comment these out. F1, F2, F3. So I called F1. There's my log statements. I am getting those. And then the trace shows me, hey, from that global scope, it went into function one, then two, then three, then four. It shows me the entire stack. And all of this was just triggered by console.trace. So it gives you an opportunity when you are trying to log something out and it's nested deep inside of some other function. Maybe there's a chain of functions. Oh, there was an event listener that called this thing, that called this thing, that called this thing, and then there was a fetch, and then that triggered this. If you've got this big, long list of things that are taking place, and you want to find out what was the order that those things got executed, that's what this is for. Console.trace is going to let us find those things out. So if I come down here and I do something like, I don't know, let's say a set timeout. There we go. So after one second, this function inside the set timeout is going to run and it's going to call the number four, which will have the trace. So the trace was just inside the F4, but it's going to give me the entire stack. So I save this and run it. There it is. The delay took, the delay took place. If I refresh, there you can see the delay took place for the set timeout. And then Inside F4, that was logged out, but then the whole stack is from the main timeline. There was a set timeout function. It was an asynchronous thing. Then it called an anonymous function. That's this one right here. And then it called F4. So that was the progression of the functions that were called. If I had given this a name, let's say Bob. There it is. Now Bob is sitting there instead of anonymous. This was an anonymous function. Now it's a named function. So we get all of these taking place. If we wrapped this inside of another function, we'd get that level of um, happening as well. But that's what it is. So we've got beyond just console.log, there's also error and info.
There we go. There's the error. There's info. There's also warn, which are all similar. But you can see that it gave me an error. It gave me a warning that showed up in the console. So if you ever want something to pop up indicating that there was an error on the page, you could do this. OK, so beyond those basics, we've got console.table and console.trace, both very useful functions. Hope that helps you out. Um, there are more console functions. Uh, there's a link down in the description to this code sample page, so you've got a copy of that. There's also a link to the MDN reference page for console. Have a look in there to see all the things that console can do. There's stuff with timers and being able to start and stop timers with it as well. Lots of great stuff. All right, as always, thanks for watching.